Hey guys, this is Elise. I am a licensed professional counselor and a wellness coach. Welcome back to COVID-19 Mental Health Chats. In this video, I will be talking about the importance of keeping track of and developing our personal narratives about our experiences. The basic principles and skills I will be referencing for this chat are from my background of training in evidence-based trauma therapies and specialty pastoral care training. Our personal narratives are the stories that we tell ourselves about our experiences. Our personal narratives are rarely resolutely at a final draft. They continuously get edited and reworked as we recall certain memories, forget other ones, explore a motif or a theme, and experience epiphanies or have moments of self-actualization. However way we draft and redraft our personal narratives as we build our life experiences and our life stories, and however way that we process it internally, we all have a story arc. And there is a pattern to what a narrative's arc looks like. So let's travel back to elementary school writing and reading class. You may recall that the basic narrative arc looks like this, beginning with an introduction, laying the stage and all the main characters, a conflict that emerges from within or attacks from an exterior source, and in response, a rise of action, a climax, and with some resolution leading to a denouement to the end of the story. When we apply that same principle to the framework of narratives for difficult experiences such as the global coronavirus pandemic, these are some of, I'll be sharing some of the bookmarks that are along that narrative arc's path. The structure of that story is also the structure of healing. And from a mental health perspective, it looks a little different than the narrative arc that we were taught in school, which goes straight up, down, and out. For the structure of healing, the narrative looks more like, here's where we were, and then we kind of fall into a pit, and, and then have to find our way out of the pit, and go back up, and go forward. You begin with the intention to tell the story to yourself to make sense of it, to learn from it, to grow from it, to whatever you want to do from it, every story starts by first telling it to yourself before and if anyone else ever hears it. You first have, so I'm, I'm gonna start telling you what are the elements of this narrative arc for the story of healing and um, the story of difficult experiences. So you start from a life situation, however, Instead of the usual upward curve, like I mentioned before, the arc goes down before it goes back up. So you start from the life situation, and, um, and then in the story, as it goes along, especially if it persists, this, if the situation persists, you start to notice some behaviors. Some, and, and pretty much all of them, are done in an effort to adapt to what is going on, to what is experienced. But not all of it may be ideal, so you may notice that there begins to be a dysfunctional behavior or a series of them or multiples. So the first element of the, the, the story arc is the life situation. The next bookmark is the dysfunctional behaviors. And this constitutes outer actions, the things that you can observe and describe about what you're doing in response, what others around you are doing in response, how collectively we are acting and talking and emitting behavior. Then the page turns and we start to notice that there may be a downward, another downward bookmark, which is the emotional upheaval. All the things that were stewing, that were bubbling, that may not be fully understood or even really that intelligible and may erupt, the emotions that may erupt that were underneath those dysfunctional behaviors. There may be more bodily sensations than emotions. It's okay. Whatever that next section looks like for you, the emotional upheaval section, it's all valid. It's all legitimate because that is your experience. Either way, we're in the inner turmoil and internal disturbance. As we spend some time there and stew and marinate and stew and marinate, we may start to realize, either on our own or by the help of the metaphorical editor to our story, that there are some false beliefs which are driving the continual experience of these negative emotional upheavals and some of the dysfunctional behavior, which is that next step. Or it may be just discovered as not necessarily driving it, but what comes and crystallizes because of 
the dysfunctional behaviors and the emotional upheavals. So that's the next bookmark in this uh, story arc are the false beliefs. Um, some extremely negative cognitions that act like biases and skew the trajectory of our story to continue to go downwards are what would constitute false beliefs. But recognizing something alone doesn't always come with great joy, understandably. It's negative. So then we find ourselves, when, when we come to realize these false beliefs, we go down to the next bookmark in the story arc. We start to notice the deep wounds, and that's the next bookmark, the deep wounds, that have been drawn or experienced from up here where we started in the life experience, in the life experience continuing. It is a dark place down in the bottom of the story arc. The good news is that this is the bottom of the pit. The difficulty though is that when people are finding themselves in the stage of deep wounds, it is hard to know if you're really in the bottom of the pit. It's very dark there. Things are uncertain, fearful, anxious. There's, not, there, there's a lot of mystery and it's not the type of mystery that we enjoy. It's difficult. Um, it may be where we start to no longer feel numb, where we start to feel again from all the shock and there's pain, loss, grief, trauma that we can identify. In extreme situations, we might dissociate from ourselves, disconnect and kind of wonder what's real. Is the world real? Am I real? Who's real? Like what's, what's trustworthy? What's, what's reliable? And uh, we wonder if there's a deeper pit to the story arc that we're not quite at the worst of it yet. But we work through that darkness with some faith and some hope. And we keep moving, even if the faith and the hope seem to be totally absent. Just by virtue of moving, by continuing to blink your eyes, trying to adjust to the dark, that is a demonstration of hope. Because even if you're staying still, you blink in your eyes, staying still in that darkness, there is a minuscule hope that someone will come find you and help you through this. So in different ways, whether you're actively moving through it or hoping and praying for someone to come along to help you through that dark space, you are in movement. And sometimes we do meet someone in that darkness who is stuck down there too. They might be behind us in their own story arc or they might be in front of us in their own story arc or right kind of somewhere parallel to us, next to us. Wherever they are, they help us see where we are in our journey by having a point of reference. We can see how far we have a ways to go as a guesstimate. We can see how far we may have come as a guesstimate just by having someone cross our path. If we are blessed to meet someone who has a flashlight or even a map with a compass on it, and some extra survival skills that we were not equipped with before this life situation happened upon us, that individual can help us navigate through the dark place of deep wounds a little more optimally, maybe a bit faster, maybe more effectively, maybe with a little, little more hope, a little more faith, a little more peace of mind, whatever it is. It doesn't mean that that person is like God and can just make it all better but they have a tool that they can help you with that you can be helped by. Eventually, as we keep working through it, we find that we are now on a trajectory to healing and wholeness. A lot of times people think a path to healing and wholeness is where the story arc curves up immediately. That isn't quite right. It's only partially true. Usually it takes a lot of grit to get through the majority of the healing and wholeness bookmark of the story arc before it starts curving up. So really on the story arc, you might, you know, we, we, it would be natural for us to think, oh, there's just one bookmark down there. It is going to be the deep wounds. But no, actually in this story arc, there is a line and then it curves up. So on one end of the bottom of the pit is the deep wounds. The other end is the healing and wholeness. And the healing and wholeness has to be majority work through in the dark before it starts to curve up. As the gains of skills and habits of using positive resources and, um, and patterns strengthen in areas of personal, spiritual, emotional, and mental steps, 
which are taken and they become more the steps become more self-assured more confident you start to find firmer footing better ground and that's where your story arc will begin to move upward towards the next bookmark in the story arc which is truth and acceptance it takes real humility vulnerability and courage to look at truth and acceptance there can be tinges of shame or guilt but it does not have to ultimately overpower even if it seems like it's two steps forward one step back for a while because the next bookmark on the story arc still going upwards is comfort and peace the peace comes with understanding and newfound wisdom maybe newfound is too light of an adjective for um how difficult the, the arc of challenges difficulties and healings is is experienced as so if i were to describe it differently this green and earned wisdom from experience as you spend more time with that comfort and peace in appreciation of the truth and acceptance it is founded upon because of the healing journey it took to restore and create wholeness out of something so dark and hard and painful from the past dark pit of the story arc the deep wounds the false beliefs the emotional upheaval the dysfunctional behavior the life situation as you reflect on all these things and how you got there the wisdom you have now earned prompts you to start taking steps forward you don't have to rush anything just take one step at a time left foot right foot left foot right foot each of those one step at a time become empowered living and that is the next bookmark in the story arc going up which finally leads to the last part of the story arc and that is the new life situation and i want to i want to be clear when you start with a new life situation and you end with a life situation in the story arc they are not the same life situation even if they are same on the outside you have the same trees buildings the same people may be there the same concerns of the world may even reign in the media outlets that may be the same but your interior self has gone through such a transformation that now it actually is not the same life situation at all so there you have it the structure of healing in narrative format i want to encourage you to journal for self care to increase self awareness for your personal process and experience of these times and to gain self knowledge and wisdom and understanding from it as you are um journaling I'd like to encourage you if you feel comfortable to share as much as uh you feel comfortable with or as little as you feel comfortable with and if you don't feel comfortable you don't have to share anything but I'd be so curious to hear and to see um some of your emerging drafts of your narrative at each bookmark point of the structure of healing narrative arc with a consistent set of friends or family members those that you trust and if you are part of the self-care group that I'm running you're welcome to share it there as well um and just you know see like compare notes how are others doing how are you doing or if you want to do more of a one on one you can schedule a consultation with me and we can we can get that started um i would love to to make sure that you're taking care of in these times we're in a very sensorial time right now that just about everybody has no developed language to contain it and control the circumstances with we're I think it's fair to say that we're all grasping at straws for a language to describe what this coronavirus and pandemic experience is because it is new for the world and every population is affected by it. Journaling is one step you can take that you have control over to help the sensorial, experiential, sensational process that hangs out in your right brain to travel over to your left brain. which thrives on words is linear loves and desires order is logical and is analytical you need both sides of the brain to fully process an experience every day we have right brain experiences of what is going on and the left brain will ping back what is figured out to the right brain then the right brain will ping it back with more sensorial information some puzzle pieces and 
than the strands of words that the left brain can use to make some kind of patchwork quilting on. But um, the brain, with an exercise like journaling, can more easily process it and send it back and forth. Because sometimes, especially in difficult times, it's hard for the brain to um, feel secure in just letting it go through to, to go back and forth because it may be perceived as, as threatening or dangerous, um, too disturbing. So journaling can really help with processing that. Um, and to process it on and on until it finds a peaceful place where the narrative of the left brain matches well with the sensorial intuition of the right brain. Enough, perfection's not the goal, just enough to be at a balance. If you decide to journal or already have a practice of journaling or creative writing, I'd love to hear about your process in the comments below in this video. You're welcome to share samples again in any of those forums, whether it's just with your core, your core people or in the self-care group that I'm running or to schedule a consultation with me and, and to do one-on-one -on -one with me. Well, until next time, please comment, like, subscribe, and get connected. I will continue to share free information that is practical, that is doable on your own to help you practice self-care in these times. God bless.